Have you ever been to Russia? If you have, you may have noticed a few strange business practices, especially when it comes to customer service. How is customer service related to Global HRD, you ask? I'll get to that, but first, let's compare Russia's customer service with the United States. As an American, you're probably used to decent to outstanding customer service. Customer service expectations in the U.S. can be summarized into five basic components. One, deliver products and services at the agreed upon time to all customers. Two, listen to, accept, and act upon customer feedback. Three, assist all customers in defining their needs and requests. Four, be courteous and professional to every customer. And five, deliver the highest quality service with the goal of exceeding customer expectations. Customer service in Russia, on the other hand, takes a completely different stance. In fact, their expectations can be summarized into a single phrase, it's not my problem. Let's take a situation that you will probably have to deal with if you ever go to Russia. You're waiting at the Russian embassy to hand in your visa application. The woman behind the counter you need is having a conversation with another person. That person walks away and you walk up to the window. The woman looks at you blankly and suddenly walks away also. This could be for several different reasons. She has a break, she wants to go discuss something with a coworker, or she doesn't normally work at that booth. Regardless, the explanation is the same. It's not her problem. So why is Russian customer service so terrible? Well, the pervasive cultural attitude of, it's not my problem, permeates all levels of Russian society, all the way to the top of the chain. Circumstances in Russia change rather quickly, and all too often, nobody higher up bothers with telling the personnel. For instance, a chef will not explain to a server that they are out of something on the menu until someone orders it. If you are going to train employees in Russia about customer service, be sure not to assume they know the obvious procedures. A Soviet teenager asked a McDonald's trainer a very serious question in the middle of a customer service training. Why do we have to be so nice to the customers? After all, we have the hamburgers and they don't. Responses to customer service like this are expected from employees that never had to worry about good service before. Russian customers don't expect special treatment and therefore do not leave a business just because of bad service. But can you imagine what would happen if one store decided to treat its customers better than the others? With no competition, customers would flock to that store. So how do you motivate employees who don't feel any need to be motivated? Incentives. Offer employees financial bonuses for giving good customer service. You can even make it a competition to encourage employees to keep improving. Here are a few things to remember when presenting your customer service training to Russian employees. Use examples from their culture. They're very proud of their culture, so try to be knowledgeable. Develop group activities. Russians have a communal mentality, so personal relationships are extremely important to them. Lastly, be patient. It takes time to change a habit. So how is customer service related to HRD? It yields significant competitive advantages, including customer loyalty, relationships, and financial satisfaction. I'll leave you with a quote from Valerie Zeithamel, an internationally recognized pioneer of services marketing. As relationships and service become increasingly pivotal in business, the profitability of customers is becoming more important than the profitability of products.